<laughs> hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Today's tour is so freaking exciting because it is my personal 2022 Ford Expedition Stealth Edition. I have been driving this car for the four-ish months now as a mom of two and I just started really thinking about how I'm going to have it function for when I'm a mom of three and that's what this video is all about. We're going to talk about the car seat setup, the trunk space, the cubbies, what I've been loving, why I chose it. Everything Expedition is going to be very in-depth. If this is your first time joining me, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. I'm a mom of two, almost three, and a certified child passenger safety tech. You guys want to see my car? And special shout out to Continental Tire for sponsoring today's tour. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's start with a little bit of background on this car and my history with vehicles. So my family owns car dealerships in the St. Louis area, so I grew up driving demo cars, getting a new car every four to 5,000 miles. I've never had a long-term car like this until this vehicle. So I wanna talk a little bit about the story on how this vehicle came into my possession and also why this was the car that I wanted. So I decided when I became pregnant with number three that I wanted to do a Ford Expedition. I've toured all the mom cars out there and I knew that this was the perfect car for my family, but I was very specific. I wanted the bench seat because I'm going to have three rear facing children come January. So I wanted to put all three of them across the bench. I also did not want to get the max because one, I didn't want a car that big and two, the max body style would not fit in my garage. So I knew that left me with an Expedition, non-max bench seat, and that could be a little difficult to find. So the day I told my dad I was pregnant, I said, okay, dad, I'm pregnant. I'm ready to commit to a car. I really want a Ford Expedition bench, not max. So like, let's just look for any trades that come in. I was totally open to doing a more pre-owned vehicle, a 19, a 20, something like that. Just wanted to get the ball rolling on starting to look for a car. The very next day, my dad called me. This 2022 Ford Expedition Stealth Edition bench seat, not max, got traded in with 4,000 miles and it was meant to be. So that's a little bit about how this car came into my possession. I've now been driving it for about four months. I've put about 6,000 miles on it and I love it. So let's get into the tour. Okay, take a look at the front end. Now, is the front end of the Expedition my favorite full-size SUV front end? No, I like the Tahoe, I like the Yukon, I like the Wagoneer better. I honestly think in the front end department, she has a little bit of room to grow. It's not my favorite, it's a little clunky, but I do really like what this Stealth Edition does for the car. I think all the blacked out elements are really pretty. This is also kind of like a gunmetal gray. Again, wouldn't have been my first choice if I like built a car from the manufacturer. I probably would have gone with a true black or maybe even a white and not in the Stealth. But overall, I've been pretty happy with this dark color. And I do like this dark gray with the Stealth. Um, grill is also blacked out on this trim level. And then I get into my headlights right here. Okay, let's move along to the side profile. I kind of just want to get into the meat of the car, like the Expedition exteriors, it's just fine. Like to me, the interior is really where things shine, but I do really appreciate these upgraded wheels. They're blacked out, which looks nice. They're just 22 inch rims. And I have the Terrain Contact HT Continental tires on them. Loving the Continental tires. I love my Continental Terrain Contact HT tires. They are a premium all season tire designed for light trucks and full size SUV. The Traction Plus technology provides improved traction and durability with better grip on wet roads and quiet road noise. Okay, moving along to the rest of the car, we've got some silver down here, which is nice to kind of break up the top to the bottom. I actually have enjoyed that this is not all completely blacked out and they do give me this little bit of a chrome strip. Loving that there's body color right here. Everything looks nice. And then this is where I love the car. I just like love my shorter back end. This car just functions so well for me. I think that extended wheelbase, I know some families need it, but that makes the car feel so much bigger and so much less sporty, fun, easy to drive around town. So I'm so happy that I didn't get the Max. If you're curious about the difference between the Max and the regular, the Max is 12 inches bigger behind the third row. So as far as cabin space, driver space, car seat setup, they're identical. So if you don't need the extra trunk space, I would not get the max. Okay, let's take a look at the back end. Pretty boring, pretty basic, kind of like the front end. Not, it's not my favorite. I do have the limited trim if you were wondering, so this is not the platinum. So the Stealth Edition gives me the blackout elements, but it's a limited trim level. Again, I do like the chrome bar right here just to kind of break everything up. Back end's pretty simple. Tail lights look like all Ford Expedition tail lights. You guys get it. I don't think you're ready for the interior. This bench seat, you're gonna die. Okay, so here is a shot of me in the 2022 Ford Expedition, my personal car. So we did clean it before, but okay, I'm a mom of two, like cut me some slack. Let's take a look at our door panel. So on the Stealth Edition, we have the red stitching, which is really fun. It kind of just gives it a little bit of interest and it kind of gives like the simple Ford interior 
something nice to look at. Door panel besides that is incredibly boring, incredibly basic. Like they couldn't have a wood trim in here if they tried. It's so boring, but it's okay. Look at these cubby spaces down here. Love, so long, takes up the whole door panel. Unfortunately, we can't do that, which has been a little disruptive to my lifestyle, but it's great for like wipes, water bottles, Starbucks grandes. Like there is a time and a place, wish they were just a little bit better cup holders, but I like how it takes up the entire length of the door. Okay, let me get you on the other side and we'll start breaking down the features. Okay, here I am again in the driver's seat. Just kind of wanted to give you an idea of how I fit in the vehicle. So as you can see, my headroom in the car is amazing. We love it. The seats are okay. They're semi-firm. They're fine. They're nothing crazy. Um, as far as like my visibility is concerned, I have great visibility in this car. I have big windows. Even with the car seats, which I'm not going to lie, do kind of disrupt me a little bit. Um, the visibility is still good bummed to see no rear view mirror right here a rear view camera as you know like i really like that feature especially for someone like myself who's going to have three kids in car seats across the bench my visibility is slightly affected um, not to the point where i'm concerned about my driving but i would just like to have the option to put that on every once in a while okay what do we need to get into all of the things um okay my dash completely digital dash right here it's nice kind of basic not very customizable i really didn't choose this car for like the bells and whistles and the features. So I'm trying like not to be too harsh on it because I really think you're going to be impressed when I get to the back. Um, so dash is great. Let's get into the iPad screen. Um, the iPad screen has been a little touchy. I'm not going to lie. I have had two instances when the entire screen stops working and I have to like turn off the car for like 10 minutes and then it works again, which is especially annoying when you consider that the climate control is also in the screen. So I literally, like, let me paint you this stressed out picture of me. It was a hot day and I got in my car, the screen wouldn't turn on and I couldn't change my air. And I had to drive home with the windows down with my two kids because I couldn't change the air. So like, I know that's a glitch. I know that's not gonna happen in all of them, but it's been a little glitchy. Additionally, the Apple CarPlay um, that is wireless works. I would say 85% of the time, the other 15%, it just will not work. No matter what I do, disconnect, reconnect, plug it in. I cannot get it to work and take all that out of it. I like the infotainment system up here. I still hate the climate control. I hate that it's in it, but everything about the climate control takes two buttons and it pisses me off. So I want to mention that this screen is an upgrade. Do not upgrade. It is not worth the upgrade. I would love just like, I would love the ugliest, biggest, climate control buttons over this things like if i wanted to change the air takes it's i'm telling you it's so clunky do the fan everything is two buttons go to the rear the rear air is incredibly i can't understand it for the life of me i don't know how to get them to sync the heated seats it's it's and like i have to hit that exact off button i really hate the climate control and i've seen a lot of other car reviewers talk about this as well so I know it's not just me. So besides that, the screen is fine. Like, you know, you can like, they have the fun little sketch thing. The navigation system's good. The Apple CarPlay when it works is really pretty to have on this giant screen. I don't mind the looks of it aesthetically. It's actually really grown on me. It's just, if the climate control was out, I could almost deal with the glitching, but like, I hate this climate control. Okay, moving on. Wireless charger, cubby spaces, USB and USB-C right here. So that's very exciting can close everything up which is really nice especially if you like wanted to wipe it down like I probably should have before this um, and then we have our two cup holders right here great cup holders fit a Stanley water bottle very well I like that they're over here sometimes I prefer a side by side but I, I like this here is my shifter my drive mode my auto start stop all of those like basic necessities oh I love the power folding mirrors those are really nice love that um, and then we get into our center console. So first things first, I love how big the center console is. I've had several car lunches here. I have done Zoom meetings from here, and I really do appreciate how square it is. I also like that it's a little bit higher. Some other cars have a center console, but they're so much lower. This has just been like a perfect height for me, which I know seems like a minor thing, but I spend three hours in my car a day. Like, that's important. Okay, inside, it's probably a little bit of a mess. I'm sorry. I have like my little different organized bags right here, which I've done a whole video on. And then this little tray, which has just like really random stuff in it, but it's a great size center console. I mean, like swallows my elbow. Like it's, it's really is. It's nice. It's wide. Um, I love these little bags from Amazon. Super helpful. And one of my favorite parts is we have two more cup holders back here. So 
love that for my water bottle, for like my leftover iced coffees, for my husband's iced coffee, having four cup holders in driver's reach, plus the side cubbies is a 10 out of 10 situation for me. Can't say enough good things about it. Um, sunglass holder is right there. I think I covered all of this. This is fine. Nothing crazy. 12 volt. Some and A really shallow thing right here, but I have found myself putting snacks there or something. So it's got a double double glove box, which I love. So I keep clean supplies in my glove box because um, clean cars drive better. Okay, so in the top one, I just have some jelly and some air, com some compressed air to clean my car. And then down here, I have a cloth, one of my car cleaners, and my tripod that I use for putting on my mirror to film videos with. Sometimes I have more stuff in here. I honestly had to clean out my car recently for the Car Mom Auto Show. So I need to put like things like my vacuum and stuff back in there, but love having these double set love having these double glove boxes and one of my biggest hacks for moms especially or really anyone is like get your owner's manual out of here and put it in the trunk or put it somewhere else this is valuable real estate like if your cleaning products are here it's no big deal to grab them out of there and wipe down your dash every time you get gas i'm telling you it'll change your life okay so let's break down the car seat setup in the expedition and then i'll talk about how i plan to set it up for a mom of three under four so in the expedition with the bench seat bench seat is chef kiss beautiful lower anchors in all seats tether anchors in all seats we get to the third row lower anchors on both outboard seats again tether anchors across the bench so that's a total of five sets of lower anchors and six tether anchors in an eight passenger car that my friends is basically as good as you can get love it so i mentioned earlier that i'm going to have three kids that are all going to be rear facing my daughter my daughter hattie is almost two she will be on the other side my son george is three he will be in the middle and then my newborn will go right here. This is how I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have the vehicle set up. I get asked a lot, how are you gonna buckle the kid in the middle? Isn't that gonna be hard? The answer is yes, it is going to be hard. It's going to be, it is hard to get three kids in any car of any combination in and out of a vehicle. But the alternative would be to put them in the third row, which I think sounds even harder. I'm not ready to put them forward facing, so I'm not gonna do that. So this is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna make it work. And it's not gonna be easy, but they're gonna be safe. Okay, what do I wanna show first? I guess we should talk about the clearance. So I have this seat set for myself at six feet tall. This is a Kleckling, and I'm, as you can see, I have ample amount of room. Okay, for my daughter Hattie's car seat, this is a Kleck Foomf car seat. George is in a Kleck Flow. The Foomf and the Flow are two car seats by Kleck, and I chose my Kleck car seats for a lot of reasons. Obviously the safety, the extended rear facing limits, but also their ability to accommodate so many different three across or multiple car seat situations. I have the Foomf on this side. I have putting Hattie right here in a Foomf, because the foom takes up less room forward to back, giving this person a little bit more room. Flow goes further in, however, it's not quite as tall, so that's why that one goes in the middle. Another thing I don't like about these cars are these power running boards. I also don't need running boards, like I'm already tall, but these ones are so glitchy. They stay down, they come up, they come down randomly. Again, just a little bit of text on this tech on this one that I just think is worth mentioning. Okay, let's take this car seat out. As you can see, door opens nice and wide, no problem taking baby out. Um, and this is potentially one of the reasons, one of the ways my kid is going to load in there. Again, not easily, but he's probably going to have to like go around here, climb himself in before I load number three is kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, here we have me in the second row. So let's talk about some second row amenities. First of all, great bench. You just saw me do three car seats. So yeah, also mom can fit back here too. I love, I've loved the ability to sit back here with the kids on a longer road trip or still feel like we can take another person without having to like have them climb into the third row. This is one of the biggest reasons I'm on team bench over captain's chairs because of that additional flexibility. Anyway, amenities, so much legroom. Don't even know what to do with myself. Here are those cup holders, USB, USB-C, climate control, and heated seats on the outboard found in this limited trim level. Let's go to the door panel. How exciting is a door cup holder? The answer is incredibly, incredibly exciting. Something I can't stand, no sunshade. Not found on any of the expeditions. What's that about? The Explorer has them. Give us some sunshade. So I have the windows tinted in this car and it helps a lot. I'm not a big fan of like the aftermarket sunshades. I just don't think they work personally, honestly. Um, but a bum that there's no sunshades. Ceiling vents, key for rear facing kids like mine so they can get some ventilation. If the vents were just down here, they would be hot. However, I am surprised to see there's not vents down there. I feel like a lot of the cars I've been seeing lately, especially some of like the full-size ones, they have vents here and here. So that's just a little surprising to me. Little surprising. Another thing I really like about the Expedition is 
It's not your typical bench seat where the seats are connected. The seats are actually all separate. So that makes things like car seat installation quite a bit easier. And you can do things like just move this seat up, just recline this seat without affecting these two kids. Another thing I love, which people don't always think about, is people always say like, well, I don't want to put my two kids next to each other because they're going to fight. Okay. Solve that problem for you. I mean, I know they could still reach each other, but at least now they're not like crawling on top of each other. But I also like that these seats are all separate so that I could still access the third row. Every seat's doing something different. They're all on their own tracks. And now look at this third row access. So like, why would I ever get captain's chairs when I could still access the third row with the two car seats? Okay, here's a shot of me in the third row. So the third row of the expedition is great. This, is, this seat is pushed all the way back and my knees still aren't touching. So for a, what am I, like six and a half month pregnant woman who's six feet tall to be back here without this touching, I can't really ask for much more. Like this is still really good. Ceiling vents back here, which is great. Cup holders, cubbies, USBs, and these seats have a power recline, which is really nice. I also love the middle header strengths in this seat and this seat. As you guys know, I've said it once, I'll say it a hundred times. Some of the full-size SUVs, some of the SUVs like General Motors, don't put middle header strengths in. So it will be so dangerous for someone to sit here without that additional support. So I love that the Ford Expedition has that. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Lower anchors, lower anchors, all have tether anchors. I chatted about that. Here's like me in the middle seat with this seat pushed all the way forward. So like that's dramatic. So much room. A little tight on the head clearance when I sit in the middle, but what can you expect? Another thing I wanted to mention, um, I showed you the third row access. So that third row access, I like to call it the car seat friendly tilt because when you have a car seat installed with the lower anchors, or in this case, just the base of an FFA Mesa car seat with the lower anchors, I can easily tilt the seat without affecting the car seat and then still have third row access. So this works, this works great for infant seat faces, for boosters that are attached with latch, or for forward facing car seats attached with latch. Again, car seat friendly, flexibility. Freaking love this bench. Here is our trunk space. Now remember, this is not the max. So if I had the max, I'd have 12 more inches. I'm fairly happy with this trunk space. I think it can definitely do like a week's worth of groceries. I can also fit my double Zoe stroller in here and my Mockingbird double stroller in here. So to me, that's kind of a win-win. So anyway, I've been happy with the trunk space. Like I said, I can fit my double Zoe stroller and my double Mockingbird in here with no, I mean, it takes a little bit of configuration, but like nothing crazy. Uh, we have a little bit of extra storage underneath here. Not gonna lie, it's kind of lame. I have enough for a travel potty in my emergency kit and some extra wipes. Not like the deepest like trunk cubby I've ever seen in my life. Um, seats are power right here, so easy to fold. You could also fold the second row down from back here, which I also think is some nice flexibility. And it's a lot, it's lit up. Let me give you a shot of the third row down. So another reason why I love having the bench seat is because I can put all three of my kids across. I can actually live a lot of our life with this third row completely down, which is a reason I didn't feel like I really needed the max because now I have plenty of trunk space for like all my day-to-day -day activities. So I'm incredibly happy with the size of the car. I love the car seat setup. And I just, yeah, I mean, do I think it's the best looking car on the road? No. Do I think the tech's a little glitchy? Yes, but I wanted to say that because I wanted to share my experience honestly. It obviously didn't stop me from getting a Ford Expedition, so I don't think it should stop you either. I just definitely wouldn't upgrade to that screen. But I mean, this is the car. I mean, I'm very happy with it. Okay, so a little bit about the drive of the car. So it is a six cylinder. Um, I feel pretty good about the performance. I mean, I think it drives kind of like an F-150, if I'm being honest. Uh, it's not my favorite driving car on the road, but I'm happy with the fuel economy. I'm getting around like 20 to 21. I like the visibility, like I said, it's very quiet, which I thought was impressive. It does not feel too loud at all. Like the road noise is nice. And I, I like the size. It took a little bit of getting used to. I was driving like more of those midsize SUVs on a monthly basis. So now that I'm in more of a full size, it was quite a bit of a jump, but I've gotten used to it. The handling's nice, the parking's easy. Overall, I'm really happy with how the car drives. And yeah, I love it. I'm super happy. So I'll give an updated tour maybe after number three comes. It's a boy, by the way, for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, we're very excited. Uh, I'll give an updated tour maybe after I'm like in it for a couple of months with three, but for now I love it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.